This episode of Space Excellent is brought to you by the letters H and E and the word helium. Don't put it in your starship or helium makes your starship crash land. That is a true story. My name's Tim and you are watching Space Excellent. By the way, I wrote that crappy jingle and if you are looking for a crappy jingle, you know where to come. In case you missed it, Elon Musk came out very recently telling everyone what the actual reason why SN10 had such a hard landing and resulted in a fantastic flamey fireball. And the reason for that is helium. And they are working on SN11 to fix the problem. But before I can get into that, it would make sense to go all the way back to SN8 to better understand what the helium was even there for in the first place. I thought I knew until I started looking into it and I actually had no idea. We're about to get technical, y'all. There's a very interesting aspect of thermodynamics as it results to cryogenic liquid. Let's imagine for a second, this Coke can represents the header tank in Starship. I know it's carbonated, but just stick with it. If I were to shake this can up, well, of course, the pressure inside would build up. If this Coke can was full, however, of liquid oxygen, like the header tank in Starship, shaking it up actually reduces pressure, even though it's in a sealed system. The terminology for this is ullage collapse. As you know, cryogenic liquid is very, very cold, and as it warms up, it releases gas, building pressure. But with cryogenic liquid, all you gotta do is slosh it up a little bit, and the pressure actually goes down. As SN8 was doing its test flight, the header tank got jostled around, and the pressure dropped. The pressure dropped, helped starve the engine of fuel, and fantastic flamey fireball. Let's go ahead and skip SN9 because that one didn't even get vertical. Onwards to SN10. The quick fix for SN9 and 10 was to add helium in the header tank to help compensate for this collapse in pressure. However, during the flight of SN10, that helium actually mixed with the cryogenic liquid oxygen and the big problem with that is helium is completely inert. It is not flammable, which is great when you're trying to fill up party balloons, not so great when you're mixing in it with your rocket fuel. Elon Musk came out and told us that Starship actually struck the ground at 10 meters per second, or for us Americans, about 22 miles an hour. That's too fast. Imagine taking your car and hitting a brick wall at 22 miles an hour, and then you may as well make your car the size of a building and fill it with explosive rocket fuel. Interestingly, this ullage collapse actually goes back to Apollo 13. If you remember, Jack Swagger was told to stir the oxygen tanks. Now, when I heard that back in the day, I assumed that was just like, keep the oxygen fresh. But no, it was to actually reduce the pressure in the cryogenic oxygen tank. As we know, there was a spark and a fire, and the cryogenic oxygen tank actually built up too much pressure and exploded, as in this clip from Apollo 13. So what are they gonna do about SN11? SN11 is currently on the launch platform and undergoing its test that it needs to do before flight. So if SN11 can't use helium in the header tanks and they can't just take the helium out because then they're gonna have the same problem that SN8 had when it tried to land, what are they gonna do? We don't know yet, and Elon Musk has not said anything. But what do you think? Do you think that SpaceX and Elon Musk would risk another Starship prototype exploding without a relatively good fix for the helium and the ullage collapse problem? Comment below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider pushing like and subscribe, and I will be back very soon with another SpaceX Starship prototype update.